Okay, uh, thank you very much for having me here, and uh, thanks for the financial support from the Net Institute. Uh, so, um, so the, I mean, the paper actually is quite related to the um, last talk, and uh, but our focus is more on the um, competition policy, as you can see. Uh, so, the paper is joint work with uh, Julian Wright from uh, Singapore. So we know that there are a lot of uh, search platforms which uh, provide superior search service to consumers to help them search. And those high profile examples include Booking.com uh, as a hotel reservation system, Expedia as online travel agency, Amazon.com as a marketplace. And uh, so for all those examples, actually, we can find some common features. So uh, the first one is that uh, consumers can either search uh, using the platform using those search uh, specialized platforms. And they can also search directly, which means that they can use a, a general search engine such as Google, or they can just uh, call the hotel to get the price code. Uh, and also consumers can complete their transactions using those platforms, or they can uh, finish their transaction uh, directly, like uh, uh, at the counter at a hotel. And also the business models shared by those uh, platforms are quite, com uh, quite similar. It's uh, what we call agency model, where uh, the uh, platforms charge very little or non-registration uh, fee, but uh, charges uh, non-trivial transaction fees. Whenever there is a transaction, then the platforms uh, charge, then the sellers and all buyers uh, pay something to the platform. So in addition, uh, we also observe that those platforms, all those platforms just mentioned, uh, used to or still uh, impose a particular kind of vertical restraints uh, uh, on firms, which is called uh, price parity uh, clauses, which is also uh, referred to as uh, most favored nation clauses or uh, best price guarantees sometimes. So there are two types of uh, restraints are related. One is called wide price parity, which means that if you, if you are a seller and you want to advertise on my platform, then your price on my platform has to be absolutely lower than your price on your own website and also uh, on any competing uh, platform. So that's the wide price parity. For narrow price parity, it means that the price on your own website has to be uh, no lower than the price on, on my platform, but your price on another competing platform could be potentially lower than on my platform. Okay? So that's a narrow price parity. And all, so this kind of uh, vertical restraints are on the investigations uh, in several countries. For example, in France, Germany, and, the, and Italy, actually both wide and narrow price parties are made illegal. But in Sweden, um, the wide price parity is prohibited, but the, wide, uh, the narrow one is allowed. Okay. Uh, so, the main, so, the, so, so the main defense put forward by those platforms for imposing such a price parity is to prevent so-called showrooming. So what is showrooming? Showrooming means that the consumers take advantage of the low search cost on the platform and find a good match, but then they uh, switch to a competing platform or switch to the firm itself to uh, finish the transaction uh, in order to get a lower price. Okay? So that's called, called showrooming. And of course, if that happens and the platform cannot get, the, get this transaction fee, then it uh, doesn't make much profit. So there are qu uh, quite a bit uh, literature on this topic. Um, uh, most of papers actually take the um, uh, standard vertical contracting approach. Uh, um, and in uh, my last paper, with uh, pr uh, previous paper with Julian, we actually uh, was uh, using the, a platform model, and also we incorporate consumer search in, into that because showrooming only makes sense if consumers are searching. So in this paper, we actually uh, the focus uh, different from the last one. The last one we are looking at the viability of the platform. If the showrooming is very severe and the platform has a high um, fixed cost, then uh, the platform can no longer operate. Mm -hmm. But we thought that this is not a big problem for those uh, giant platforms such as Amazon uh, or Booking.com. Even if uh, there is showrooming, it is less likely they stop operating, but it will have a, a significant effect on their investment. Okay. So that's what we are going to look at in this paper. Um, so we basically model three types of uh, uh, investment by platform in this paper. 
One is about reducing search cost, which is exactly uh, the sort of uh, the reduced form uh, approach mentioned in the last presentation. So uh, we, uh, so basically, the platform can uh, invest to reduce the plat the search cost on the platform, and therefore consumers is more likely to find a better match. And also, we look at uh, the platforms can advertise to attract more consumers. Also, they can. Uh, invest to increase the transaction benefits that consumer can get if they finish the transactions on the platform. So you can think of the transaction benefits such as the rebates or as the uh, uh, delivery service, uh, uh, so on and so forth. So the primary research question we want to ask uh, in the paper is basically by incorporating investment. Uh, our previous conclusion about the bad effect of price parity change or not. So, so here comes the model. Um, uh, so there is a continuum. Uh, there is a continuum of buyers denoted by B, and there is also a continuum of firms uh, denoted by S. And the, the uh, products are horizontally differentiated. So um, the, we also no normalize uh, the production cost to zero, and the consumers get uh, uh, idiosyncratic match value if they encounter a firm which is V. And they also need to pay a price, which is P. Uh, the match value is I the draw from a common, commonly known distribution, and we also assume a, a weekly increase in hazard rate. So, so we have so basically in, in our paper we have two more uh, two markets coexist. One is a direct market, and there is a, uh, a platform. So firms are always available. Uh, in the direct market, you can think of firms have their own website or have their own physical stores. Uh, so consumers, uh, if consumers choose to search directly, then they do this in a sequential fashion. So they incur search cost SD, D stands for a direct market, uh, every time they sample a firm. And the consumer will learn both the firm's price and also the match value. And also this uh, uh, consumers um, expect the match value of searching directly which is what we call XD, is uniquely pinned down by the search cost SD. And also, if the search cost is lower, then this match value is going to be higher. And then uh, there is another market uh, selling channel, which is this platform. And firms can choose whether to join this platform. And the search works in the same, same way as uh, in the direct market, except that the search cost on the platform is assumed to be lower in the direct market. So SM is. Uh, lower than SD, and also that also means that the gross expected match value would be higher uh, on the platform. So for each intermediate the transaction on the platform, uh, M will collect a per transaction fee from the firm, and the firm's price given given the fee, then the firm is going to set the price PMI, and the consumers will obtain this uh, convenience benefit B if they finish their transaction on the platform. So this is the timing of the model. So basically, the uh, the platform will, f in the first stage, the platform choose the investment level. It could be uh, reducing search cost or advertising. Uh, in the second stage, uh, the platform sets the fee. Then firm decide uh, whether to join the platform and also what price to charge. And then, uh, without observing firm's decision, the consumer decide whether to search on the platform or search directly. And then they s carry out this sequential search uh, until they uh, buy a product or they sell. So here are some preliminaries. I, I mean, in the interest of time, actually, I skipped a lot of uh, details. I just uh, list some uh, uh, most important things on this slide. So, so suppose the price are symmetric, and consumer just uh, search uh, either on the platform or search directly, then there are two scenarios. One is switching is not allowed, which means that it's impossible for the uh, consumers to do showrooming. Uh, this, this happens if the platform uh, can somehow hide the identity of the, of the firms. So if this is the case, then as in the standard Wolinsky model, then there will be a cutoff value. If, you're, if you find a firm with a match value higher than the cutoff, then you stop and buy immediately. Otherwise, you search on. Okay. So that's when the switching is not possible. However, when switching is allowed, then stopping is determined by 
uh, which channel gives you a higher expected match value. Uh, it could be the platform or could be the direct market. And uh, as we mentioned before, uh, because the platform has a lower search cost, which means higher expected uh, match value, so XM minus XD is positive. Uh, this, this is what we call surplus differential. And uh, also, um, if we think about the pricing issue on the platform and on in the direct market, um, we can uh, get the result where the uh, price in the direct market, if consumers search in the direct market, will be this inverse parallel rate, one minus capital G uh, divided by little g. And if uh, consumers in equilibrium search on the platform, then the pricing formula will be the fee plus the same uh, type of markup. But because of the inverse, uh, the, this weekly increasing hazard rate, this um, um, fraction of XD, uh, lambda XD minus lambda XM is also is positive, which means that if the search cost is uh, higher in the direct market, then uh, firms have higher market power, and therefore the markup in the direct market is high. So, okay, so um, now we look at the first case, first type of investment, which is the platform invest to reduce the search cost. So a monopoly platform invest to reduce search cost by delta SM. Um, so equivalently, we can think about, just think about it's increasing the expected match value by delta XM. Uh, the investment cost is assumed to be increasing and convex. Then um, the social planner's problem is really simple because think about uh, what will be the social additional social value by uh, reducing search cost. That will be a higher uh, expected match value, which is denoted by delta XM. Uh, then the associated cost is C. Uh, the social planner will maximize that. Then you get this formula, which uh, implicitly defines the uh, efficient level of investment. Um, then that's what the social plan will choose, but what will happen in equilibrium? So if we allow consumer to switch between selling channels, then the consumer will obtain firms identify information on M. And then suppose after finding a good match value on M, the consumer can costly che uh, check the direct price PDI and switch to buy from a firm I directly. So that's what, what showrooming actually implies. And the thing is more complicated that, than that because the firm could have incentive to uh, deliberately reduce its di uh, direct price to induce consumer to buy directly and therefore the firm can also bypass the uh, transaction fee. So basically from our previous paper we have this uh, result we're saying that if your fee is uh, lower than the threshold which is exactly equal to the convenience benefit then all the consumer will search and buy on the platform. <coughs> Otherwise, if your fee is quite high, higher than that threshold, then the platform will become a pure showroom. So basically, consumer use the platform to search, but they never finish the transaction on the platform. They, they switch to the direct market and uh, buy, buy from the firm directly. So therefore, the showroom may actually constrain the platform fee at exactly equal to D. Um, in this case, because the uh, equilibrium fee is independent of how large the search cost is. And of course, then the platform has no incentive to, to in invest on, uh, on reducing the search cost. And therefore, the uh, equilibrium investment will be equal to zero in this case. So uh, we, ha we will have under investment. So what about price parity? Now suppose that the platform can impose this uh, price parity clause. Then that means the price in the direct market is never gonna be lower than on the platform. Uh, and therefore, the showrooming will never happen because showrooming is going to be uh, ruled out by price parity clause. Uh, in this case, um, the platform will set a fee which uh, makes consumer exactly indifferent between searching and buying using the platform and not participating at all. Okay? So basically, in this case, uh, the consumer surplus will be fully extracted by the very high fee. and. Uh, so this is about a fee. So what happened to the investment? Um, the platform will, again, uh, maximize the profit by choosing the investment level. And the equilibrium investment is given by the second formula. 
So in this case, we can find that actually there is uh, overinvestment. The reason is quite actually similar, also similar to the last paper saying. So when the search cost actually decreases, which means there is investment in the uh, by the platform, uh, consumers become more choosy or become um, more uh, more picky, and therefore they um, they tend to search more. In this case, the competition between firms bec uh, are intensified, and therefore the markup is going to reduce. But this reduced the markup doesn't go to the consumer. Instead, this reduced the markup goes to the platform because the platform has the power to raise its fee. Uh, and therefore, the, but this markup is just the transfer between different agents, and uh, which is not a social plan of fair. So um, there, that leads to the overinvestment. So the implication of price parity. So without price parity on the investment, with price parity, there's overinvestment. Uh, the price parity implies strictly lower consumer surplus, and the, but the total welfare could be ambiguous because without it, it will be underinvestment. With with uh, price parity, it will be overinvestment. So um, the result can go either way. So, so that's the monopoly platform. How about uh, the competition between platform uh, plat platforms? So the first one is uh, we first look at the homogeneous. So there are two homogeneous uh, competing platforms. So uh, we assume that they have the same initial search cost, which means then gives you the initial same initial uh, expected match value, and also the same uh, convenience benefit. And uh, the two platforms uh, both can choose the investment level. But however, we want to avoid this kind of replication of uh, investment. So we assume that they move sequentially. Uh, MI invest first, then followed by ME, and then they set fees uh, simultaneously. And also, we give certain advantage to the uh, platform which we call incumbent. The incumbent, uh, if consumers search uh, are indifferent, then they choose to search and finish the transaction on the incumbent platform. Um, so first, uh, if there is showrooming and without any price parity, or there is a narrow price parity, uh, actually, um, the, the platforms are just doing uh, per trend com uh, competition. And then the price, uh, the fee is going, going to be driven to zero. And uh, then no platform will invest at all. Okay, so again, there will be only investment. Uh, so narrowing uh, price parity has no impact. It rules out the direct purchase option, which is not relevant because the competition level, fee level is at zero. So, um, so the narrow one has no impact. So how about the wide one? So the on-platform price uh, are the same because uh, the wide price, price parity means that platform uh, eyes, uh, the price on platform one should be no higher than the price on platform two. But then the platform on price two should be no higher than the price on platform one. So therefore, the price has to be the same across the, plat uh, the, pro uh, the platforms. So then uh, the platform can only attract any business uh, if it has a lower search cost. Then all the consumers are going to uh, use, that, uh, use that platform. So given MI moves first, then it will preempt ME by invest to the point that the platform's monopoly profit from uh, forced consumer surplus extraction is fully offset by the investment cost. So basically the um, incumbent will uh, in invest a lot so that it's impossible for the entrant platform to make any profit, even if uh, it gets all the consumers, even if the entrant gets all, consu all consumers. So the competition between the platforms no longer constrain the fees because the price parity uh, can always raise up the, the fee, but it puts a pressure on investment. So the competition between the platforms uh, leads to overinvestment again. So this is a summary for the uh, price parity, uh, the implication of price parity cl clause with homogeneous uh, platforms. So without PPC or uh, with narrow pr uh, price parity, there will be underinvestment. With wide price parity, uh, overinvestment. And the narrow price parity has no effect on consumer surplus at all. Uh, the wide price parity lowers both the welfare and the consumer surplus. So that's the competition case for two homogeneous platforms. So what if the platforms are differentiated? 
So suppose there are two differentiated platforms, and uh, I have to admit that there's a t particular type of differentiation. So here, half of the consumers get convenience benefit B from MI, uh, but B minus A uh, from the other platform, and vice versa, versa for the other half of the consumers. Uh, a is a random draw uh, between zero and B. So in the absence of price parity, or uh, with narrow price parity, then the phi will be equal to the inverse of the density at zero. And then again, this phi is not dependent on uh, the search cost. Right? So then the platforms will, uh, will not invest in, the, in, these, in these cases. Um, so on the, the wide price parity, the phi set by the differentiated pl platforms are uh, not constrained by showrooming because the price parity already rules out the direct alternative, so uh, there is no showrooming, but are con constrained by the possibility of the rival platforms undercutting in fees to, uh, to, extract, to attract the exclusive listing, which means that uh, because the price parity clauses requires the price has to be the same on both platforms as long as firms join both platforms. But what if one platform reduces its fee to a very, very low level, and then all the firms will prefer to exclusively join this platform and no longer join the other platform? In that case, then the, this price parity clause will not uh, in effect. Right? So, so that will be the possible deviation by, by one platform. So given that possibility, uh, we find um, uh, actually a set of equilibrium with full, surplus, full consumer surplus extraction. Uh, which is denoted by FJ and FK. Uh, J is the platform with lower search cost. And you can see here alpha has to be bigger than one, which means the platform with lower search cost will always have a higher market share, higher market share in equilibrium. Okay? So this re reflects the fact that the platform with lower search cost it has an advantage in e attracting uh, exclusive listing. So suppose we, select, we just select the, the, the extreme one, uh, extreme equilibrium, where this alpha equal to two. And in this case, again, the uh, incumbent platform will preempt uh, the entrant platform by choosing a very, very high uh, investment level so that the uh, entrant cannot ma make any profit. And this result also hold more generally for any alpha close to two. And, uh, uh, so again, the message here uh, for the differentiated platform competition is consistent with what we, we have for the monopoly case and the homogeneous case. Um, you can sh so here, basically, uh, without price parity or narrow price, only with price, narrow price parity, um, there will be underinvestment. Uh, with wide price parity, uh, there will be overinvestment for any alpha which is close to two. And narrow price parity can reduce consumer surplus if competition fee exceeds B. So basically here, narrow price parity can even improve consumer surplus, depend on, on uh, how intensive the competition between the platform is. But however, the wide price parity always reduce consumer surplus and total welfare. So again, we find that sort of uh, the uh, adverse effect, effect of wide price parity. So, um, let me just to say, uh, briefly say something about the, the, the other type of investment, which is about the advertising. So here we say that the, the second type of uh, investment is that the platform can invest so that uh, NM of the consumers will know the existence of the platform, and the rest of the consumers will be unaware of the platform, and therefore they only search directly. And, uh, um, and then we the social planner will maximize will maximize this um, linear combination of the uh, surplus generated by the two types of consumers, informed and uninformed, and then and then um, the um, efficient investment level will be given by in the last line. So what about? Uh, let me just directly jump to the uh, price parity case. So on the price parity, then the one of the N NM consumers will hold a high expectation of price, and therefore they don't join. So these are the uninformed consumers. Uh, 
for those informed consumers, they were still drawing, but their surplus are going to be fully expected. Uh, the, the reason here is very similar to what we had before. Um, the, uh, for the, for the, the, the f so there will be, again, the uh, overinvestment for the, uh, y for the price parity case. So let me just uh, conclude. So, um, so allowing for investment does not change the main conclusion regarding price parity clause. And the, the results support the platform's uh, claim that it will actually help to, in, uh, to increase the investment, that's true. But it, all, it, all, uh, it often leads to overinvestment. The welfare effect of wide price parity are uh, at best ambiguous, uh, but consumers are always uh, worse off with wide price parity, and a narrow one is better. And uh, we have to also, for the future work, we have to also consider competition in the advertising case. Discussion is uh, Hannah Hallaberdo. So thank you very much for the opportunity to read uh, to read this paper. This is a, a very interesting paper, and it has some um, non-trivial analysis in the sense that it uh, it has a non-trivial welfare comparison because it compares uh, in a way two inefficient outcomes. Very often we have. One an outcome that is uh, the efficient benchmark and then we have some other restriction and then we compare whether it's efficient or not. Here we have two outcomes that are inefficient and the challenge that the authors face is to say which one is better in terms of welfare or, cons uh, or consumer surplus. Uh, what's going on in the paper, uh, what is the situation we're anal uh, analyzing, is that it's a situation where firms sell their product either directly or through a platform. In a situation like this, a buyer can either buy a, a search in a decentralized market and, uh, and just look for those companies to sell from them directly, or it can go to a platform where the, where the search is less costly and uh, the, all the possible options are listed. It's easy to go and, and to check out what's there. In both cases, when a, when a buyer encounters an offer from a firm, uh, it learns about the price and about the match quality. And what is important here is that the match quality is heterogeneous. Different buyers are looking for different, firm, uh, for different things in a, a particular seller or in a, when they are buying a good. Now, because the search is less costly on the platform, the buyers will search more on the platform and they will find a better match or a better deal. So it may be either better match or maybe not necessarily better match, but a just as good match, but at the lower price. Either way, they have more options. Now, when they found this better or cheaper match, they, can, uh, they, uh, they, they found a cheaper or better match on the platform, but they could, in principle, go to the seller directly and buy from the seller if the price from the seller is cheaper than the price at the, uh, at the platform. So, um, and in, in fact, if left to their own devices, the sellers will have incentive to post prices that, that, that will make the buyers want to buy from the sellers directly because they uh, need to pay a fee F if they sell through a platform. So if they sell through a platform, the price that the customer play, uh, pays um, uh, on the platform P platform uh, is uh, uh, needs subtracted uh, the, 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 the seller gets the, the price that the buyer pays minus the fee that the platform collects. If uh, the seller uh, if the buyer buy, buys directly from the platform, the seller gets PI. So as long as uh, the PI is between what the seller gets from when selling through a platform, and uh, the price that the platform charges from the, uh, from the buyer, both the buyer and the seller will be better off to circumvent the platform and just buy directly. So uh, take the search benefit, but buy directly from the platform. But in this case, the platform gets no revenue from this trade. And uh, the platform has, of course, no incentive to search, to invest in search quality, or we may, may, we may even ask what's the purpose of a platform to be in this market. If they have any cost of operation, gets no revenue, then it's a problem. 
And for this reason, uh, many of the platforms have instated this, uh, this uh, 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 price parity clause would the for force the uh, sellers to sell at the same price on the platform as the direct, pla uh, the direct price. And uh, this in its, uh, uh, in its own way, it's a, a type of a most favored, uh, most favored nations clause, which is anti-competitive. But what the platforms claim, because uh, this basically in principle has been shown in the previous papers by, this, uh, by, the, by the authors, uh, but what the platforms claim is that, look, we have no incentive to operate in the markets if, there is, if this uh, uh, price parity clause is revoked. Uh, even more, we have no incentive to invest in improving search quality. And uh, in fact, there are many other situations in the market where there are anti-competitive clauses already instated, and it is to the benefit of the market. So for example, patent protection is an example of this. You instate monopoly, this is anti-competitive, but it gives incentive for the firms to invest in R&D. This is just the same thing. So the others take this question and investigate whether this would really be the case. So of course, clearly price parity clause is anti-competitive in the sense that it gives higher profit to the platforms because platforms can now charge higher prices to the sellers. Buyers have no outside option because outside option has to be the same price just as the platform price. Uh, the platforms now benefit really from, the, from lowering the search cost. Why this is the case? Because consumers with lower uh, search costs, consumer considers more uh, sellers. Therefore, the sellers facing more competition, they lower the prices to compete. And then the platform can increase the fee and capture the difference between the willingness to pay and this uh, competed away price for the, for the sellers, the underlying price. So uh, with this benefit, uh, it actually, uh, platforms want to invest in decreasing the search costs, but they invest too much, they over invest. So in principle, the platforms were right that uh, uh, the uh, price priority clause is not, without the price priority clause, there is not enough incentive to invest in search quality and such a clause gives them incentive to, to do so. Now, the problem is that it does not necessarily benefit the, uh, the consumers. Whether it benefits the society as a whole is an ambiguous issue, but for the customers, the overinvestment is worse than, uh, than underinvestment. And this is actually not a trivial result because, well, we know it's inefficient, but would it be better to have too much of a good thing or not enough? And one of the challenges of the paper is actually to get the conditions or to find the conditions uh, right. Now, what I am wondering are two things. One is uh, less uh, kind of more trivial, uh, is how does this result compare to the Ellison and Ellison uh, paper on the, on the market for used books? So in their papers, uh, the, uh, there is a they look at the market for used books that moves from the brick and mortar type of books to online uh, and online there is uh, better search it's easier to search for those books uh, and what they find surprisingly is that the prices increase the reason why the prices increase is that as the the the, the, the uh, search is cheaper, the matches get better, and as the matches get better, it increases the willingness to pay of the users, of the searchers, to pay for such a book or for such a product. And this leads to higher prices that the sellers can set. It seems to be a little bit different, the, 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 the environment seems similar, but the steps of the logics are different than in the, um, uh, uh, in the current paper because somehow cheaper search uh, leads to more competition and lower prices that the sellers set. So I would like to see how this is, how is it reconciled and what are the differences in the environments. In both cases, this is a platform, uh, platform issue and search, cost of the search issue and heterogeneity in match, uh, match values. So the key elements seem to be the same, conclusion is different. The second thing I'm wondering about is what would be the socially optimal fee structure for the, for, for the platform? Because here you assume away the participation fee. Say that the platform only charges the transaction fee. 
But the problem of circumventing the platform for executing the transaction is similar to what, what dating sites are facing. So once you meet uh, this person, you like their profile, you have the incentive to basically match, uh, match offline. And if the dating sites would charge just the transaction fees, they would never make any money. This is why they charge participation fee to be on the site. And they don't charge you for, for a match. Uh, because, so in this context, we can also imagine a situation where sellers pay just the participation fee, no transaction fee, and then consumers can search on the platform and they are free to go and buy from the seller dire directly. But since the match quality is better, the seller can charge higher prices. So this way the seller actually benefits from the, from the, show, uh, from the showrooming. And, uh, and because the, the sellers benefit from this, they, um, uh, they are willing to pay the platform the participation fee for allowing this lower search cost. So this could be this uh, more, efficient, uh, uh, more efficient situation. Now the question is, why wouldn't platforms, would the platforms want to do it? Probably not, but, but this would give us a maybe benchmark of efficiency. Thank you. Okay, great. to uh, comment on those. Uh, so thanks, Hannah, for the discussion. Um, so I just briefly uh, replied to the two comments uh, she made. So uh, uh, one is about the, um, the comparison to Ellison and the Ellison model. Uh, so, so I agree that it seems that the price change, uh, the direction of price change are quite different. Uh, so I think here is a, the fundamental problem is here is that what the role the search cost play or the lower search cost play uh, play here, right? So, so on the one hand, so if you think of the problem is like the current value, so what you have now and the, the, the option value of search on. Uh, so a lower search cost mean probably means that you have a higher current ma match value now. So this gives the the pricing power to the to the seller, but it also means that uh, your future value is also higher by searching on. So that gives you the the the, the, pre the, uh, the pressure on price to to go down. Um, uh, yeah, I agree. That I, I guess it depends on um, sort of the model setting. Or, or so I actually I haven't read that paper, so I probably will, uh, will have, to have a look. Um, the the other one, yes, I agree. I think I think um, uh, so. This is also a main thing of the paper because. Um, it's true that we, we do observe actually for those platforms they don't charge membership fee, but the question is why they don't charge membership fee. Uh, so uh, one thing here is actually, um, so could be of, of the, because a lot of platform, a lot of uh, firms are not make much profit on, on those platforms. So if you charge even just a little bit platform fee, then if there is some risk of not getting any consumers, then probably those firms will not want to join. So there could be some uh, coordination problem th there as well. But I agree that it seems that at least theoretically, imposing uh, a membership fee will actually increase the profit for, for, uh, for the platform. So in our, in our model, basically for the monopoly case, it's the same as the, as the transaction fee in, in our case. But for the competition case, it's indeed it's different. And uh, um, uh, so, actually, in the last in, in the last paper we wrote, we actually we have a discussion of, of of this fee. So we think that there is a particular fee called a referral fee, which means that if you if you uh, find your product on my webs on, on the platform, but then switch to another firm, uh, but still you can be tracked. So if if we find this kind of behavior, we we are gonna still charge this firm for the for the, for the transaction. So if the referral fee is possible, then this price parity clause is completely. Uh, redundant, so we just need need to use that fee is uh, sufficient. Uh, 